Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today we begin the book of Psalms. 150 different poems and songs that have been put together in one book. Strategically put together, I mean, there's an introduction, that's Psalm 1 and 2. There is a conclusion, that's Psalm 146 to 150. And then there are five sections in between. If you look in your Bible, the editors have put their book one, that's the beginning of Psalm 3, about Psalm 41, book two, book three, and book four, and book five. And that's because the writer who compiler seems to have at the end of each section written this phrase. It's repeated five times. May the Lord, the God of Israel, be blessed forever. Amen and amen. Now, that seems to bring to conclusion that section. Now, these Psalms have been written by a multitude of different authors, kings and anonymous people. Uh, David wrote 73 of them, Solomon, Moses, a guy called Asaph, the sons of Korah, and then one third of them actually are, are anonymous. Now, the, you will see different types of songs and different types of poems as we go through it, but essentially they divide it into two broad categories, uh, songs of lament. Uh, where you look at the world, see what's bad in the world, and you call on God, and you say, God, please intervene, which tells us this is a legitimate way of praying. God, I see these bad things. I'm telling you about these bad things. Please intervene. And then there are you know, the songs of praise, joy, and celebration, when you see God's intervention telling the stories of his greatness. Now, interestingly, the first half of the book of Psalms are predominated by the songs of lament. And then the second half, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit mixed up, but the second half is mainly the songs of joy and of praise, which, which tells us quite a bit about prayer. That, uh, you know, as we travail, as we call on God, our morning is turned into dancing. Now, we're going to go straight to the beginning of this book. With, remember, I said there was an introduction, chapter 1 and chapter 2. So, uh, chapter uh, 1, I mean, Psalm 1, uh, was an anonymous, I mean, we don't know who wrote it, but it starts with this blessing. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the ways of sinners or the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now that law of the Lord there is speaking about the Torah, the five books of Moses, and also broader teaching that God has given. And so he's saying, blessed is the man who meditates on God, who prays, who talks to God, who listens to his word. And he says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water. Now I'm up on <laughs> Cape Town. It is a drought at the moment. I mean, the fires just up the road here. People have been told to evacuate their homes. And so this is a very dry mountainside, but I'm standing in a riverbed and you can see that the tree planted in the riverbed is flourishing. Whereas everything else that's on the, barren hillside is really struggling and he's using that imagery he's saying the person who's planted by this he's like a person planted by streams of water which yields fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither we're in the middle of a drought this tree's got beautiful green leaves and he's but he, and then he compares them to those who do not pray who do not follow the ways of the lord who walk in the ways of sinners he says they like chaff and they stand ready to be judged and then he concludes by saying, For the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked lead to destruction. The whole compilation of Psalms starts by saying this. Get into the word. Start asking God. Speak to God because he's watching you and he's going to walk with you. Now, the second Psalm is a reflection on David's promise that he received in 2 Samuel 7 that the Messiah was coming, that a king was coming. And the same word blessing is used for those who are waiting for this Messiah. It starts like this. Why do nations conspire and mock God? Because this is what it says in verse 4. The one enthroned in heaven laughs and he scoffs at them. He said nations who, kings, who go and pretend to be something important are scoffed at by God. Verse 6. For I have installed my king in Zion, my, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree, he said to me. 
you are my son, today I've become your father. Now we know that that is speaking about Jesus, don't we? Because in Hebrews 5.5, 5, it speaks expressly. I mean, the writer of Hebrews says, that's all, that's all. Psalm 2 was speaking about Jesus. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. So he's speaking about the Messiah who's coming. He's going to take the nations by storm. And honestly, as you take refuge in him, also get to take the nations as our inheritance. Also see, get to see God's kingdom established. And then um, he says in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule. And then he says to the kings, kiss the son or you'll be angry. You'll, there'll be destruction waiting for you unless you kiss the son. So the book of Psalms starts by saying, it's time to pray. It's time to get into God's word. It's time to listen to him as we wait for our coming king, Jesus, the Messiah. And of course, we have met Jesus, our Messiah. And so what a great way to kick off this compilation of Psalms.